Hello Internet! In this video we're going to be taking a look at destruction in Asteroids VR. Uh, so we were had a stream last Sunday and we sort of built this destructible subdividing cube. Uh, and the way this works is I will I'll play this I guess. It creates a subdividing cube that uh, divides itself into eight pieces every time it gets destroyed. Uh, there's a few problems with this. One, the prefab is automatically linked to itself. So not to the prefab instance, but to actually the object that it is, which means that if I destroy this, what ends up happening is that prefab goes missing because we destroy the original piece. And we obviously don't want that because this means that nothing will work anymore. And that's probably not good. Uh, and so we need to fix that, but there's a few other things. I'll actually show you what happens when this works. Uh, so if we do this, it creates a cube that is eight by eight. And so we need to replace the prefab like so, uh, just using the actual prefab. And then that fixes this weird issue. Uh, if we destroy this, we get eight. So there's now four here and then there's four more in the back. We can destroy these recursively uh, and they'll just keep getting smaller and smaller until they get below one. Uh, so this chunk now is at the minimum size. And so when we actually destroy this one, it's just going to be gone entirely. Uh, and so this is sort of how we're thinking of doing destruction in Asteroids VR initially, at least as like a starting point, because it's this is relatively straightforward. The code is actually not super complicated. Uh, let's drop that. It looks like this. Uh, so we have a size, uh, just a comment of like how it's going to work, and then a minimum size. When it falls below that minimum size, it actually gets destroyed. The destroyed flag is sort of a debugging thing. Uh, when that's true, it actually subdivides and deletes the current object. And then the chunk prefab is sort of the, the chunk that we have. Uh, when it starts, it resizes the object to be the correct size. And then all the update does is see if it's destroyed, update it if the size is greater than the min size, it actually creates new chunks. Otherwise, it just destroys the object. Um, and so this is doing some fun fun matrixy stuff. Uh, we want to put it at a fourth of the position in every direction, uh, and that way we actually get a, a full cube back because it's half the size and we, we move it a fourth over, so half of the size is on one side and half is on the other side, uh, and that just ends up completing the cube. Uh, that gets multiplied by the actual transformation matrix, and the reason we do that, uh, it doesn't show up here, but by using a transformation matrix here, or using the transformation matrix, it means that if we take this cube, uh, re reapply that, and then like rotate this, like so. Uh, let's do a Z as well, just so we get all, all three dimensions. If I were to destroy this, because we're using the transformation matrix, it still works. Uh, and that is sort of a handy little thing. It also makes the math kind of handy, because this is all these are constants effectively these vectors here are constants uh, and so that that just makes it kind of simple uh, it means that no matter what the scale is that's coming from our from our transformation matrix and not from any fun math we're doing up there uh, and then we just create a series of those chunk prefabs and use those because the prefab it uh, resets to itself which is kind of weird um, I'm actually for like propagating that chunk prefab down through the object, which is not good. That's what we're going to be fixing in this, in this video. Uh, and the other thing we do is just divide the size by two. Uh, so the size gets halved every single time. Uh, but that is sort of part of the problem. What I want to do is create some main controller object that is actually going to handle this part. So we're going to send off a command to create a subjunk at some uh, relative position that's going to actually know like the uh, this component, what the chunk looks like. There's a few reasons I want to do this. One, it will mean that everything or all the instantiation of new asteroids is handled in a single place, which could be really, really handy for uh, optimizations later on if we want to use some something that's actually kind of uh, keeping track of instances. And, and reusing those, we can actually start pulling from that and use that all 
there instead of having to ha have each of these uh, asteroids themselves keep track of that object. Uh, and there's a few other things. We avoid this prefab issue uh, and hopefully it just becomes a little bit, little bit easier. I'm not entirely sure how well it's going to work, but I figured we'd try. <laughs> so that's what we're going to be hopefully getting done in this video. So what I would like to do is go into the scripts. We have this destruction. Let's do a asteroid spawn controller. I hate adding controller onto the end of things because it it implies something that I'm not sure we want and it wants to open a new Visual Studio code. There we go. We'll just do that. <laughs> so this needs a, well, we need our chunk. So let's grab this and we have this create sub chunk. We want to effectively turn this into a spawn asteroid command. Uh, so this is going to be some sort of public thing that is going to spawn a new asteroid. Uh, so we're going to call it spawn chunk. I don't know if that's a good name for it, but we're going to use it. <laughs> and so there's a relative location that we give it. This is relative to the uh, to the parent. And so that parent is where this transform is coming from. We're still going to want to use that because that just is super handy. And well, so okay, there's there's a there's a few ways we could approach this. One, we could convert into world space and then send that world space uh, position and rotation out to this spawn chunk command, or we can do all of that here. And I'm thinking, actually, it makes a little bit more sense to give it a world space position. Uh, so this will be our world position. And we'll have a quaternion, which will be our world rotation. And the reason I want to do it this way is because this way we can use this spawn junk to do things other than just create destructed bits. We can also use it to spawn new ones. Uh, and that wouldn't have been possible if we had required a parent because the new ones wouldn't have had a parent. Uh, and so that's, I think, what we're going to do. There might be some extra stuff we're going to need, like size is a calculated thing. We're probably going to want to pass that in as well. But for now, I'm just going to leave it. Uh, it's going to be mad at me for that, but that should be fine. And so we have world position. Uh, we don't really need anything for that because it's already there. Uh, so we can just take that off and just use the world position we're passing in. And then here we have this transform rotation. We can actually just use world rotation and pass that in. We're going to need some sort of chunk prefab. So we can get rid of this start and update method. This is going to be more of a, a utility class. Uh, so we're actually not going to have many actual like updates or starts or anything going on here. It's mostly just going to be there as kind of like a game controller object. Uh, so let's give it a prefab, uh, game object chunk prefab. And so that gives us the prefab that we can use. Uh, we do not have the size, but we can also take this, this chunk uh, has a prefab attached to it. Because we're storing it here now, we can remove that from here. Uh, so this is no longer needed, which means the instantiation can go away. Uh, let's comment that out for now and get rid of this and this. Uh, and so we're, I'm keeping this around just so I know how we're getting the rotation. It's this transform rotation, but I'm just, you know, going through the steps. Uh, so. We have this. We need to get this asteroid spawn controller for every asteroid. Just as sort of a starting position, we are going to have some sort of private uh, asteroid spawn controller, uh, asteroid spawner. Probably not the best name, but we'll go with it. Uh, so asteroid spawner is going to be equal to game object find object of type and we want to find an asteroid spawn controller. Somewhere in our scene, there should be one of those. 
Uh, and so we should be able to find that. It's going to actually search over the entire scene, which may not be great, but that for now is fine. Uh, we're not really worried about like scaling this up right now. We're worried about getting this working and then we can kind of iterate and make it better. Uh, so this should be good. That should get us our spawner. And then instead of passing this into an instantiation, we are going to take our asteroid spawner and do a spawn chunk on the world position with a this transform rotation. And we'll give it a size as well, which is going to be equal to this dot size divided by two, uh, 2, 2.0 F. I'm going to do a float there just to kind of enforce that that is a float. Uh, doing just a two is would work because it should get casted back up. Actually, it won't. Why did, oh, okay. This wouldn't work if our size went negative for some reason. Uh, so if, or if we tried to do like 0 0.5, that isn't even possible. So we're gonna do a float because I think a float makes sense. This should be a float as well. Uh, so both of those will be floats. It, it shouldn't have any effect. We might run into some weird rounding errors, but that should be fine. Uh, and we'll leave those both commented out for now. Uh, no overload takes three things. So let's give it a size. So a float of a size. And now our chunk.size is going to be equal to this size. Like that. And there we go. And so this will create our object at the world position and rotation that we want. Set the chunk and add that, or actually get it and then set the size of it, uh, just so that that's configured. And then everything else should be good. So hopefully, <laughs> we should be able to just create a new game object and add this asteroid spawn controller to it and configure it. And then everything should be good to go. Uh, so spawn controller, let's throw this on there, uh, get our prefab and attach that. Just make sure everything's good. We have a size, a min size and destroyed. So we should be able to take spawn controller. Uh, I like to just kind of keep these near the top and then start this and hopefully we don't get any errors. <laughs> and hope, I, I guess if that works, then we're good. Uh, so we have a single object, no errors. That's good. If we destroy this, we get eight cubes, it looks like, yeah. And they're all in the right place. That's good. Let's move this one out just a little bit and rotate it like, like so, and then destroy it. And everything is still good. Uh, and so we can start destroying this one as well. And yeah, everything seems to be good. If we destroy that final one, it actually disappears. Uh, so I think we've actually got a relatively working, like spawn controlling asteroid thing. We're not running into that issue with prefabs anymore and everything is kind of in a central location. Uh, so even in like a basic implementation, we can do things now, like count the number of uh, asteroids that get spawned, for example. Uh, don't know if that's necessarily worth it, but it's, it's an option that we didn't have before. Uh, as a basic thing, we can do public void start and spawn in just a basic asteroid. Instead of actually having one in our scene by default, we can actually spawn one in. Uh, so let's spawn chunk at world, uh, not world position, vector 3.0 and quaternion.identity. So just the default values with a base size of eight, for example. Uh, probably don't wanna end up hard coding this in the end, but for now, this should be fine. Uh, just as like a more example and also just getting to a point where this is a little bit more useful and friendly. Uh, so we can actually delete this, hopefully. And if we run this, we should still get, the, get our asteroid spawning in the center like this. And everything should still work. So we can rotate this, destroy it. Uh, the lighting gets a little weird. 
which I don't think is going to be a problem because as soon as this explodes, uh, these should all start drifting apart. Uh, so I'm not really worried about the lighting. That that bug will work itself out. Uh, but yeah, I think this is sort of where I wanted to get this, and it seems to be working pretty well. So I think we'll leave it here and hopefully move on from there. Uh, if you did not see the first part of this, we did a live stream on Sunday, uh, and I will post a link in the in the end screen to that stream if you wanna wanna catch up. We merged some open source stuff uh, that people have committed to our or contributed to our uh, visual effects things. So we have a whole visual effects library out on GitHub that covers a number of the different like shaders and other things we've done in, in Unity to kind of make things look cool. Uh, if you want to go check that out or maybe contribute back, uh, definitely consider that. Uh, but I thought it was pretty fun. We had a lot of, a lot of interesting things go on. Uh, and this was one of the things that came out of this. Uh, so yeah, I'll leave it here. We'll pick this up at a later time, but hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you did, I'll see you in the next one. Till then, see internet.